Welcome to the Aftermarket Report, Sunday's edition with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is February the 2nd, 2020. And today we're going to be talking about a few stocks. But first, support we support traders globally in achieving their financial security and freedom. So today, basically, we're going to be talking about VXRT, NNVC, CODX, NVAX, APT, AEMD, GILD, and these are all going to be related to the coronavirus. Miss Vegas, hello. Yes, and uh, good day to everyone. It's Sunday, February 2nd. I'm going to try, we're both going to try to basically be as succinct as possible with all these corona uh, tickers that we want to cover today because I know a lot of you want to get ready to enjoy the Super Bowl and I'm look for, looking forward to it too because I want to see J-Lo and Shakira at halftime. So um, excited for today's game. So uh, before we get started, I just want to um, touch about the coronavirus. You know, that's been the major headlines in the news for the past week, obviously. And, you know, basically the facts about corona, I mean, it is uh, the symptoms are runny nose, sore throat, uh, bad coughs and very high fevers. So what happens is when someone gets this virus, okay, the virus enters through the nose and the mouth. It then basically finds what they call a host cell in the respiratory tract. And then what happens is the cell then bursts, in, bursts into the respiratory tract and then it basically infects other cells that are nearby. So the virus can be spread from human uh, to humans, also from an animal. Uh, usually people are saying it's from a snake. Uh, they're saying that, uh, you know, sometimes, um, you know, uh, some people eat snake. Uh, the virus can also be transmitted between humans in droplets. And what we're talking about droplets is basically from coughing and sneezing and touching or shaking someone's hand. So usually some people that unfortunately do pass away from this virus, it's really complications from having an ammonia and swelling of the lungs so obviously the virus can cause your respiratory to swell up which makes it very hard for the lungs to pass any oxygen into the bloodstream which can obviously unfortunately lead to organ failure and death so we know that ammonias can kill people by them causing to drown in the fluid that's flooding their lungs and so this is why the virus is being really something really important that everyone's just worldwide concern. So as of today, thank you so much to our friends at the Trade Exchange. Um, they're amazing, kept keeping us posted on the weekend on what's happening. So the latest is that the China virus death toll has risen to 304 with 45 new fatalities, according to the government. There's been a first coronavirus death outside China, which took place in the Philippines. And the coronavirus, we have about 14,500 cases and about a death toll, about 305. We have recovered, though, 340, so um, that's actually good news for those individuals, and uh, we hope that people uh, will be getting better, and hopefully there'll be some treatment for the virus. Now, um, David Tepper um, was speaking to Jim Cramer, Jim, on CNBC, because I know we are fans of Jim Cramer, actually, yep. and uh, he was mentioning that, you know, you really have to be careful with the with this because with the virus issues because it it could be a game changer and he just kept saying you just got to be careful and this was his interview with that he had with Jim Cramer actually today so you know what are your thoughts about that as well I think that he's right I mean anytime there's fear geo and this especially can bring down any economy and if they start closing down plants and and you know, comparing like Tesla or Apple, if they start closing down these plants and, and just trying to maintain this virus and it spreads throughout the world, it could affect other countries also. So, yeah, this could, this could be a serious thing to make market pull back 10, 15 percent at least. Sure. So I'd be, sure. And you know what? Go ahead. I'd be careful on the big caps that have run up so well and just try to find a little support levels on them and just see how the market reacts and how the trend is. Friday, the Dow closed down more than 600 points, which kind of, you know, and there was no really recovery during that period. So it kind of makes me think that we're going to have another week until this, till they, until we kind of have some kind of maintain. So this could be, February could be a, you know, pretty bad week, pretty bad month. Go ahead. 
Okay. Well, you know what? Let's just get right to it. And we're going to start talking about these Corona stocks. And if, you know, if you're listening, um, I would write these tickers down and create yourself your own watch list and just call it the Corona watch list. Cause that's kind of what I've called it. You could call it whatever you want, but I just think it's just easier to, to connect these uh, biotechs knowing that they're all working on developing some Corona type of treatment. So we will start uh, with VXRT. Now VXRT is um, had uh, was initiating a coronavirus vaccine program, and that was mentioned actually on Friday. So we have seen obviously some activity on the stock. Uh, you know, there was a lot of uh, chatter. You know, a lot of companies are trying to um, you know work on a vaccine, and uh, you know VXRT also had popped. Uh, the week before because they had the results from an influenza challenge study that was actually published in the Lancet Infectious Diseases uh, article. So uh, I think we should keep a watch definitely on this VXRT. And Jim, let's hear your thoughts on VXRT because they're it, doing so many different things right now. Um, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on the actual chart. All right. Well, let's look at the yearly chart first. I got the three month up here right now. So let's look at the the yearly. We had some yearly highs, as you can tell, at the beginning of last year when we were up here right around the 236. So we got we could get 100% gainer on this again if we can started to fill the gap. You see the gap right here that we had back on a uh, 4919, and we broke past that gap. We did have a little pullback right here, as you can see on the chart, for the last three days. Then we had that big bounce up Friday. When that market was red, boy, this thing was green. We had a low support. So let's go back to the yearly chart and see where that low, low, low was at 25 cents. And here we are up $1.25 with a high of right around 139, somewhere around there. So that's the resistance that we got to break. And I'm going to make it 138. We got a support level here. We got a little resistance level here at 125. And then I got another one right here at 112. So I'm going to pull up the 20 day. These blue lines are from previ previous year. And these gold ones are from all the way back from the uh, 2018 era. And let's go back three years on it. Take a little fast look at it and see how high it was three years ago. We did have a high at 1331, and we had 1059 resistance, and we also, I mean, this thing can run up. If it decides to go ahead and get some mustard and really start to go, this thing can bounce on up. We just got to see how the trend is going to be Monday. If the market's red, I guarantee probably a lot of these coronavirus stocks will be green. I almost guarantee it with a 90% accuracy. So let's pull up the 20-day. Let's see if I missed anything here on the 20 day. We did have a nice little run on the 20 day chart from 30 cents all the way up to 149. I had a 150 resistance up here. I guess I was calling this out in the room Friday, thinking where it might go to. We had a 160 high, so that's going to be our target for right now. Your first support is going to be right down here, right at 125. You see where we had that high here? It could be 126. And that's where that 9 EMA is right now on that 20-day, one-hour chart. This is a TTM chart with the 200, the 34, and the 9 EMA. So your first support is going to be 125. That second one is going to be right around the 110, 112 area. And then your, your 105, I always like that number. I always like these pullbacks go to about 105 to, to 112, somewhere around there. You could see it pull back there. And the low bottom line support that has to hold is going to be this, you know, about below a dollar. But it could run back and hit this 200 again. Who knows on 20 day. But but let's see if we can keep it above a buck, 104, maybe 105. And if not, it can pull back to this lower support of 88 cents. Now I'm going to pull up the daily and see if there's anything that I might have missed. See how it bounces off the 200, how it did Friday. You had a couple times to get in it. It did kind of consolidate up on the way up here and then pulled back. But once it hit that 200, it bounced on up, then closed right into high and pulled back. And then we got a higher high after hours right here at 149. I almost hit my 150 target, but see, we pulled back to this 200 again. 
Now, for anybody that's new and new to watching these videos, I like using the daily one minute for a support level of that 200 EMA. So that's how we're going to call it. Low support at 88 cents. First support right around the 125 at 125. And then we got another one right here. I'm just going to chalk this in right around the 119. It might pull back and consolidate there a little bit. But your solid support is going to be right here in this area between 105 and 112 for a strong buy. And that's going to be VXRT. And the next one we're going to talk about, NNVC. Yeah, so NNVC is nano verisides. You know, they did confirm last week that they have been working on a treatment for the novel Wuhan virus, uh, the coronavirus. And um, they also did mention um you know they've been mentioning you know they're working on it i mean everybody's working on it but then there was a caution blog report circulating on the name so you know i just want to mention uh and jim can tell you you know we did see a lot of these coronavirus stocks uh do a lot of popping but then we saw them at one point as well pull back and that's because sometimes when they mention okay it's not so urgent or guess what we have found some treatment uh, you'll see the stocks pulling back almost almost as if like people are like, oh, okay, the epidemic is over or okay, it's, it's under control now. And so nobody like says, okay, the stock's no good now. So that's kind of like uh, what we're noticing sometimes with the behavior of the stock. So take it sometimes with a grain of salt, you know, trade these stocks, trade the channel, trade the momentum, but always have proper stop loss, mental stops, if you get stopped out, it doesn't matter. You're going to have another opportunity to probably get back in this trade and find a right entry and support spot, which was what Jim is covering off here. So again, keep that in mind. So NNVC uh, initiated coronavirus vaccine pro, um, sorry, initiating that they've been working on a treatment, uh, but then there was that caution blog that came out. So again, keep, a, keep it, uh, be cautious with all the names, you know? They're all going to be saying that they're working on a virus treatment too. So, Jim, let's hear about an N N N V C. She's 100% right. Don't be jumping in these virus trades and then go on vacation for a week and come back and wonder why your portfolio is down 50 to 100% because these stocks have had a good run already. As I'm going to show you here on the yearly chart on uh, N N V C. Where where are you? There you are pull up this yearly chart I'm always on the cautious side I'm a cautious trader I don't like to carry any bags so I was prepared for this this thing that happened Friday I was holding Tesla and it dipped on me and I got you know I was able to get out of it but I would be concerned about holding Tesla for for a little while in a way and just kind of scalp it but in NBC we have this is the yearly chart, and you can tell we were down here at a dollar twenty-seven. Just oh, back here on uh, on ten four nineteen a couple months ago, three months ago. Now we're all the way up here to nineteen twenty. So this is one you got to be very cautious on. This could be, you know, like she said, this could be one that you could be. You got to watch the volatility and make sure you're in the right trend when you walk in in the morning. If you're not in the trade already. Now I got a low support on this thing right here, right around the 1232 area, somewhere in between this 1141 and 1232. And we've had two big day. We had a big Friday on this. See, when that market was down 600 points, this thing was up. I don't know how many percent, but I mean it. Let me see. It had a low. Let's pull this up on a daily one minute. First, I'll pull it up on the 20 day and see if I missed anything. Now, see we. Do have a nice little trend going up here. Sometimes I like to draw a little trend line just to see if we're still following the trend. Put it right about in here. So I'm thinking, yeah, see how that trend line goes right, right to that red line right there? See what I mean by support? I didn't notice that until just now, but that's a good example. So I'm thinking that low support's going to be at 1232. Then we've got these other three supports right in here. Right now we're at, we closed at 1676 and it's pulled back to 1593. So then I'm going to put another little trend line right in here that I've seen. I don't want to miss that. 
So let's pull this up to daily one minute. Let's see, and I'll call this trade out. I'll take it back to 10. We do have a support right here at 1507. And I could raise that up just a little bit. So I'm going to put a little kind of little thing right there. Between that 1507, that 1523 is going to be your first support for the pullback. And if that holds, that'll be fine. Then you got another one right here at the 1481 area. So I'm going to pull up this 10 day back to the 20 day now. So yeah, so we have we have pretty tight squeeze right in here. If it goes any below this 34 EMA on the uh, 20 day one hour at 1445, you can see 1232. And that's what I want to see hold. That was kind of like a little resistance level. And it did break out with two nice engulfing candles and held pretty well. But these wicks kind of, you know, show me a little bearishness. But it is a blowhorn pattern. You see what I mean by blowhorn? And I talk about this a lot in the room when I see one. It's usually a bearish, pa bullish pattern. But it's just volatile. It's kind of hard to draw this in, but I did see that. Kind of right around in there. So it can pull back to that 1232 area and bounce back up and find resistance right here, right around the 1581. But the resistance that we need to break come, uh, come Monday is going to be this area right in here, and it's going to be right around the, I'm going to say right here around around 1624. You just have to be very careful in these trades. Right around there, 1624 is a resistance that we got to break. Then we can bring it up to 1676 and try to find a little equilibrium right up in here, right around the, I'm going to go ahead and chalk her right at 1742. And then we just have these resistances. You can stop these, uh, stop these, uh, this video at any time and write these numbers down, kind of compare them to yours. But always remember, they came from I Love Stocks. The next one we're going to talk about is going to, let me go over this one more time and make everything clear. And I'll pull this back up to the 10 day. We got a low support at 1232. We got a little pivot point area, right, which is now support right in this area. That's between the 1463 to 1533 level. And the resistance that we need to break is going to be this 1624 to bring it on up to the next three resistances. And you can see it can run all the way up to 1719. And we did have a 1980 high. So just kind of be careful. It is a descending pattern also that I'm seeing also. So this is going to be, like I said, it's a volatile, volatile play right now. But it, it can be played, especially for scalping. COD, CODX is next. Okay, so CODX, um, they're in Utah, and, you know, they're also a uh, molecular diagnostics company that obviously is looking into, you know, development, developing technology and uh, um, treatment. And they're also one of the ones that had news yesterday that they said that um, they have successful initial verification of the novel coronavirus test. So what the CEO mentioned, Dwight Egan, he said that uh, after a concerted effort by the company, the scientists and the laboratory technicians, they're pleased to report that their unique and rapid development process has culminated in a test with excellent characteristics. Um, he said that um, they will be doing uh, additional verifications and preparations to quickly make the test components available to laboratories around the world for actual validation with human samples. Um, so uh, I guess that's actually good news. We could see an actual pop maybe tomorrow on this actual stock. So definitely keep this one here on your watch list because it actually has news that came out. Um, so definitely keep it on watch uh, for sure for some activity. So Jim, let's hear about the Codex chart. All right. I just cleared it all up, kind of get a little bluggy there, but we did have a breakout previous about on 718 somewhere around there that did have a high of right around the two buck area and i see mm -hmm. oh yeah i like that two dollars okay let me put that right there but this is a yearly chart we had a 69 cent low and she did have a nice little bounce here and kind of pulled back i'm kind of liking this the way this chart looks right now there's a little support level right here 
bam another one right right there looks like another one right in here we got a little one right here we got a resistance up here at 1343 so let's pull this up to the 20 day see if I missed anything in here kind of missed this little spot right here so I'm going to draw this in at 217 and that's right where that 200 EMA is it has bounced off that 200 a couple times and then we had that big breakout you know when the virus came out and it did pull back for a couple days and then bam she retested that top and created a little bit more more beast up there a little more resistance level and I'm gonna put that at 360 and then she did have another two-day pull back and here we are on a three-day run and then Friday again right into close you know you don't know what's gonna happen over the weekend so this was probably a, tr a swing trade for a lot of people into Monday the resistance that we got to break is gonna be that 380 your low support is gonna be that 216 and I'd say an equilibrium in there the first three supports is gonna be that 343 326 and we want that 290 to hold that's very important that that 290 holds maybe this 276 era somewhere in that's gonna be to me I'm looking at a strong buy and I'm gonna go ahead and draw that in so I'll have this ready for Monday 290 between 290 and 276 right there so that's the way I see it I see the low support at 276 290 strong buy down here at 217 resistance to break is going to be this this uh, 359 to 380 and then you got that 399 and it can go higher off that and then we'll pull up that yearly chart just take one more look at it let's pull up the three year see if we see anything that I'm missing on the three year there it is oh yeah look at that ain't that pretty when you see something like that and you have a, a, a soak out you know this this thing this this virus going on we could get back here up to these three-year highs and let me go up here and change this so I'm just going to give you a couple long ideas where you start to want to be concerned about holding the trade 424 and then you have another one right here and that's going to be right around the 481 area did have a 685 high so it can go higher off that just depends on the momentum of the market or the kind of pullback and if we have another week of coronavirus news you know more more uh, people getting affected we could still have a bullish run for a whole week on this trade and the next one we're going to talk about it's going to be NVAX yes yeah, so NVAX you know there has been some chatter about them having a patent and the other thing too is that the president Gregory Glenn He's the president of uh, Nova, Novavax, and uh, he was actually on TV, and he spoke to Bloomberg's Paul Allen, and he talked to them about how they are developing and discussing the efforts to contain the deadly coronavirus and uh, working very hard on a coronavirus vaccine. Um, if you guys remember, this stock at one time, I believe, was $27. So um, this surprised. has had a beautiful run on NVAX, right? Oh yeah, it's had a nice run in the last. I'm I'm talking even in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, it's had a nice run. So keep an eye on this one too on uh, on uh, NVAX because I actually, from looking at the chart, um, think that this has the potential. And I'm gonna just caution them. I you know again uh you know have your own trade plans but uh, from looking at the chart this has the potential in my opinion to even have a bit of a breakout yep. uh, because we know how it's behaved in the past and i think it's looking to have a range expansion and i wouldn't be surprised if people probably even swing traded this in anticipation for the breakout it kind of has that look to me that it's ready for that move so jim let's hear about the chart because i want to know what you think about a potential breakout on this stock i'm looking at a potential breakout for sure what i'm looking at is what i like is i mean we've had a double top on this on a three-year chart where we did have a lower high from the last high on it but it was up here at 55 bucks 
Then it had that huge sell-off in 2018 or 19. So I'm going to draw me a couple more supports here. But I'm really liking this, this yearly chart or this three-year chart. Let's pull up the yearly now. And this is one that's been popping up on our scanners for a while. I mean, this is just not... Since the virus, I mean, this has come up. We've been playing this three or four times. I had this thing all trended out, and I had to clear it up. But, see, we did have two different pops up here. One of them was right around the 819 area. Right now, we're at 762 we closed at. So, I'm going to... Well, let me see if I can fine-tune this. A little, there it is. That's a little better. No. Nope. There, right at 810. That's what we got to. That's what we got to try to break. It's going to be that 810 area, or break this 200 EMA at 855. Now these are called moving averages. They move around on you, so you just can't. You have to look at them as they move throughout the day. And those are like I use them as resistance levels. And this could bring in once it hit the ten dollars. This could bring in them other fat cats out there that like to play that ten dollar break. And I'm surprised they're not in it right now. But we did have kind of a little resistance level on this trade. It has run up to 985 here since the virus came out from a low of 365. So, I mean, this is just beautiful. It can pull back to the 200 on the 20-day and bounce off of it. So you always use that as a, uh, as a support level for maybe a reversal. Just watch that tape. Keep that tape and that level 2 on. Make sure you're watching it. So I'm going to draw another trend line right here on the 20 day at 879. I think this could have some pretty good moves. I really do. We did have a triple top and it did pull back for three days on that triple top and we're starting to move back up and it could break this resistance level of 810. That's very important. Remember 810, keep that in mind. Then we got another resistance after that right at 841. 879 you see that that's going to be a hard resistance when I say hard resistance I mean we've had tops right in here and we've had them right in here where it just couldn't give up and it did pull back on a descending pattern and consolidate and then pulled back down a little bit more and then had the sell off so you would have got out of this trade on this when we had these lower highs right in here that would have been sell signal to me to get out of this trade because we already had the triple top and when you start to see this fail on a triple top, it's time to get out and get back in it when it pulls back. That's a $2 scalp, you know, or short it to that 200 on that 20-day, one-hour chart. So let's pull up the daily one minute now. Let's see if I missed anything. There's a lot of trends in here. We've got another support here, and we got a resistance to break right here at 785. So we are up after hours. We do have kind of a, a resistance break that's going to happen maybe Monday morning. And we want to bring it up to them other resistance levels. But we also want to look for maybe a couple pullbacks in case, like Miss Vegas said, volatility in these trades right now. Just one headline could really turn the market up and down real fast. So, you know, I'm, I'm one that doesn't like to hold bags. If I start to get a little red in it and I start seeing the chart pattern that I disrespect a lot, I'm going to get out of the trade. Not hope. We have a low support right here at 749. That needs to hold. You can see where we had a little choppiness here pre-market Friday. And then she pulled back real hard. Always keep that in mind. I mean, these stocks can pull back and then bam, it ran real nice and successful on a down day of 600 points on the Dow from that 679 all the way up here to the resistance of 776. So the resistance to break is going to be that 785 hard support to get in maybe is going to be right around here right around the 735 to 749 area somewhere in there at 735 looks very nice i mean very nice for a strong support and if that can hold and consolidate there and start to bounce back up i might run it up to the 200 scalp it there or even take it out for the resistance break of 785 and try to get this thing up to ten dollars next week and i think it can do that we'll look at the 10 day you know, at 970, if we can break that 970, we're definitely going to break that 1075, I mean that $10 mark. And I'm going to tell you, I see a lot of times where these like to pull back about midway between 10 to 11 bucks and kind of pull back a little bit. And 
if it does that, if it breaks out of that 970 resistance level and bounces on up, it can pull back to that 970 where that triple top was, and that creates a strong support. So that's in for NVAX, and the next one's going to be APT. Okay, so on APT, you know what? Again, another uh, Corona play, and uh, I love calling it the Corona play. It's just easier to pronounce. Um, but, you know, this company here, and also another one called Lake, you know, they're always moving. Um, and these were headlined in the CDC, which is the uh, Virus Control uh, Center. And they had mentioned uh, APT. And again, it's just another Corona play. And this company, APT, they make the mask for the for for the vir for viruses in general. So not viruses, but just you know mask protection. So this is called Alpha Alpha Protec, and um, you can see them here. Hold on, I just gotta pull them up here. Is that the right ticker, Jim? APT. APT. Yeah, hold on. I just gotta pull them up. They make the masks. I don't. I don't seem to be able to pull it up here. Yep. So this is the Alpha Protec. You can go on their website, and um, they have you know the protective apparel, so the full body suit. Then they have the mask, and then they have the mask, the ones of the clear mask, and that one's really for uh, critical cover control. So they have different kinds of masks for infection control. They, I mean, they make different ones for like uh, respiratory care. They have ones that are for um, sensitive skin. So if you have sensitive skin, they have a special mask for your skin type. They make all these different shields uh, as well, protective shields um, as well. Uh, so you can actually, very interesting website. I just cannot believe um, someone was mentioning to me a while back that if you go on Amazon and you want to order a mask, um medical mask i guess what you would be look, doing a search for uh the prices are insane uh but apparently some places are sold out uh but i am seeing i'm just checking it now i see some availability here online uh so boxes of masks going anywhere from 30 dollars to 60 dollars depending uh what you're looking for sometimes 110 dollars for a box of masks so uh, people are wearing the mask and, uh, you know, again, it doesn't stop the virus from coming to you. You know, it's just a, a precaution that obviously if you're going to cough, you're not going to have any, you know, germs going on to anyone else. So it does help, but it doesn't mean you won't get the virus by having the mask. Um, so Jim, let's hear about APT, another Corona play. All right. Well, let's look at APT. Now, and I get many people asking me about the different time frames I like to use when I'm charting up yes. for, for charts. So I use the daily, uh, yearly daily, and also use that three-year, one-week chart when, I, when I'm looking for resistance levels. So I'm going to bring this up to 7, 7, 715, and we got it. And then I look for the bases of the candles. You know, the wicks, to me, are weak. But what they are also is a confirmation. Like if I have three wicks up here at at 688, I'm going to go ahead and draw me a little trend line there. That's just basically how I do it. Now I got a you know, big old fat wick right down here on the bottom. Shows a sign of weakness. And look what happened the next day. It pulled back real strong. So you're going to get a big fat wick like that. You might want to think that you might have a pullback on it. But who knows? That's what that's what happened on Friday, on uh, last week in a way. So we did have a high up here at 786, a yearly high. Try to draw that in. Very tight. There we go. Get it. So that's the yearly chart. That's how I kind of find my yearly. And then the next one I go to is going to be the 20-day, one-hour chart. I try to look from other other places that have consolidated. Looks to me like I've got her strimmed up pretty good here. Maybe a low support at 343 if this 500 doesn't, if this 200 doesn't hold the 200 EMA. Then I got a couple more resistance levels up here at blah blah, and I'm going to brought 848. So now I bring it to the daily, one minute, and I look for anything that I might have missed when I see a, a reverse reversal or a consolidated area of many reversals. 
and I see them right in here. I see, you know, I see the bottom of this base form. I see everything kind of touching up right in here. I could drop it down just a little bit, so that's what I'm going to do. As you see, when I hit that line, we've got this little spot right here. This little area right here where she pulled back, that's a real strong support level. You had to touch down there a few times. One, two, three, four, you know, five times. So that's going to be your strong low support. That strong buy is going to be at 625. The resistance to break. And then I've got the other three support levels right here, 660. Looks to me like I could draw another one right in here. 660, 655, that's not much of a big spread. So, yeah, we think it could pull back down here to 633 or that 625 area. But I'm going to look at the 20-day one more time. I'm just kind of questioning what I might be missing. 536, yeah. This 536 is a very low, low support, strong buy. And that would be a nice little retracement if it does pull back to that at that 536 level. And the resistance that we need to break is going to be the 688 to bring it up to higher highs. And there's a little period right in here, this little place right in here. Kind of see it right here, resistance levels, and I see some right in here too. But the resistance that we need to break is going to be that 688 and see if we can't bring it back up here to the 20-day high of 863 for a double top breakout. Or maybe a low support down here at right around 536. That's where we had this ascending pattern right in here. This is called an ascending triangle. You get a lot of breakouts when you see them coming. As it started to squeeze, bam, it happened. So I'm going to draw that ascending triangle in there. It's one of my favorite chart patterns. Smack. And I'm going to draw that to right about in here. Then you can see where we tried to top a few times. And that resistance level was right around in here but you can see it was kind of an upward wedge in a way but we'll just put it right in here for right now and then she had that breakout but that's an ascending triangle and then you had the two day breakout where she ran up and pulled back look at that engulfing candle after hours and then she pulled back and tried to retrace a little bit to resistance level and pulled back pretty strong the next couple of days and then, bam, we're back up here setting up for another ascending triangle right here. You see what I'm saying? You got this little formation right here, and you got this double top right here. So we could be set up, APT could be set up for another ascending breakout. We got to break that eight, 688 area. If we can break that 688, we'll go up into this new channel right up in here. And that's APT. That's going to be one to watch. Put this on your watch list. Next one we're going to talk about is going to be another good one. It just had an offering that closed, and that's AEMD. Okay, so we're going to talk about AEMD. I was getting ready for guilds, but I forgot about AEMD, which is Athlon Medical. So yep. on AEMD, another one that has uh, some Corona play. Um, you know, they did apparently tap into Australia to create a coronavirus. Um, they said that, uh, you know, this was mentioned along with other tickers like NVAX, ONCY, and NNBC. I don't know why they mentioned ONCY with that, um, because they're working on so many different other pipelines. But AMD also had a 13G filing by Ampre Asset Management on January 27th. Um, they took a 7.73% stake. And um, we could see also AEMD uh, also have that move. Now, if you actually look at this chart, I mean, we'll even go back to like the month of December, look at this beautiful scaling up. I mean, the chart's just been slowly creeping back up. And I really like what I'm seeing here. Oh, on, and this is also a low float, okay? So this is about 5.6 million shares in the float. So keep this one on your watch because this is another one uh that aemd that has that tendency you know we've traded this one before where it has the bit of a pop then it has a pullback and then you know sometimes you got to be patient because it's not like the coronavirus is gone so you have to sometimes uh trade the channel you're in and sometimes hold it for a swing trade and this is looking like it's ready for another move 
Jim, over to you. All right. Well, it, like she said, man, this thing was up here at 2130 and pulled all the way back all year long to 76 cents. And we just had an offering on it and it closed and it's starting to bounce and curl back up. So this is looking very impressive to me. I see a little area of, of resistance that we need to get to and that's going to be up around in the 601 area. But I'm going to magnify this up a little bit right here and try to find me a couple other places that are resistance. And we're up here pretty high right now. I don't think we're going to have this kind of run, but... And, one right there bam so we'll pull this up to the 20 day now look at the 20 day see if I missed anything we have low support right here at 227 we have another one right here right around the 273 area and that's pretty close to that 200 but look at that trend all the way up been pretty strong we're starting to squeeze into another ascending triangle does have a trend right here that it's been following. I like to follow these trend lines. But resistance that we're going to have to break. The resistance that we're going to have to break. And here's our, here's, a, yeah, it's going to be right around here, right around this 434 area. And draw that trend line right there. That's going to be the, the, uh, top of that channel. That's going to be top of that ascending triangle. And I want to mark that in. Sorry I'm taking a little bit more time, but this is helping a lot of our beginners out on how I draw these trend lines. And I just feel like I wasn't technical enough in my last video. So, so here we are. We have that ascending triangle breakout that can break up to the high of 465. That's going to be the hard resistance to break, the 465. And if we can get this thing back up to 502, watch out. Hold down the fort. Now I'm going to use this trend line for a support area. If it starts to break it, I'm going to go maybe back down here to this low support area of 3 bucks. That's going to be a strong buy. And there's another one right Ooh, I like that right there. Right, right about in there for your... For your uh, Maybe your low support channel is going to be right around this 362, 363 area. Right there. Then I'm going to draw this in. This is going to be a place where I think we're going to be buying it at. If it does decide to pull back, that's going to be the hard support level. No lower than that 345. Change this to blue. So that's, that's where I want to see it hold, 345. That's going to be your low, 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 low support. If it goes below that, it could be the bottom of this trend line down here, right around in this area, right around the 284. But this channel here has got to hold. The resistance to break, it could break out first thing Monday morning and break the resistance of 465 to bring it up to the 502. And like I said on that three-year chart, let me pull that baby up. This can go a lot higher. It did have a three-year high of 77.55. That could have been different, but this is way oversold, and this virus is give it back to life. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be G-I-L-D. Yes, yeah, so Gilead Sciences. You know, Gilead, uh, you know, obviously there's been, been in the news a lot. Uh, they are obviously assessing apparently the Ebola drug as a possible coronavirus treatment. They were also on um, the CEO, Dan O'Day. Uh, he was on uh, CNBC a couple weeks back. And uh, they have their earnings coming up on Tuesday. But the recent news is that they have been working with Chinese officials on a trial to determine if their remdesivir can be used on coronavirus. Now, there was an article um, Jim can show you there um, that showed that apparently they have an experimental drug for the coronavirus treatment and that they apparently used it on a patient um, that was having the coronavirus and that they saw some results the next day with the fever coming down, the coughing was less. Again, this is an experimental antiviral drug. Um, it's not approved by the FDA, but they apparently have a formalized agreement with Chinese authorities to conduct 
some clinical trials, but they apparently did give the drug. So um, very interesting. So hopefully, you know, um, listen, if you're sick and you feel like you're going to die, uh, sometimes, you know, if these drugs are not approved by the FDA and you're allowed to have them as long as you sign off some legal document. Um, you know, there is a law that lets you that lets you have a drug uh, approved, uh, tested on. So it is what it is. People just don't want to die and we don't want people to die. So um, very good news on Guild, what they're working on. And I'm really interested to see how are the earnings going to be. So I just want to mention, Jim, with regards to the earnings, um, we do have an option trade in play right now. Yeah. If you guys want to take note of, we are currently trading the February 7th. It's a weekly contract. Uh, this was purchased back on January 17th. However, um, at the time the contract was $1.43, it's currently around, it closed on Friday at one sixty-six. So it hasn't really moved a lot, about you know $23 per contract. So let's see how it does, obviously, after earnings, because some people might hold this into earnings, some people may not. The earnings is coming out Tuesday, so a lot of people may just sell the contracts tomorrow, take profits if the stock has that move. And then, you know what, they'll revisit the option once the earnings are out. Because as we know, with earnings plays, especially with options, and even on stocks, but more so on options, because, you know, people load up on, on option plays, uh, you could lose so much money with these option calls, but you could also make a lot of money. It really just depends on your strategy. I know a lot of people, like, similar to stocks, they will not hold the stock into the options. And I know people that used to trade a lot of options into earnings and now they actually refuse to do that because a lot of times the earnings are really good but the guidance is not so next thing you know they're out all that money so they rather just trade it the next day based on the outcome of the earnings so jim over to you on uh, gilead yeah that's that looks to me like we've had a descending pattern on this this is a three-year chart i mean this thing was up here at 89 bucks it had a resistance level up here right around 85.61. And right now, that's we're down here at 63.22 at getting close to that bottom resistance level where it likes to go ahead and bounce back up. And, and we got a little channel right here, but we do also have a descending pattern with lower highs. But once you're down here at the bottom, you could see the reversal. The reversal could be a little, little less than what you want, but... With this virus news, I'm surprised that this stock has pulled back the way it has in the past three days. I'm really kind of surprised, or last three weeks. So let's look at this on the yearly. This might give me a different story. It kind of does. We've been in a yearly channel. You see the yearly channel right here. It's been, every time it's touched down here at the 6221 area, it has pulled back a little bit lower, right there to 6089. But I'm putting 6163 in there. This is going to be one definitely put on your watch list for Monday. You might want to get in it for a long options trade up to around 64, maybe 65 strike. That's probably what I'd look for, a 65 strike, or even if the options are cheap enough, get in it down here when it's right, 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 right around here at 63.23, somewhere in that area. You know, if it's 63 dollars or 63.5, you could jump in that and take it up to that resistance level of maybe that 200 day at 65 64 epa on a daily one year daily so let's bring us up to a 20 day but you see the channel you see the support level we've hit it many a times and it's bounced off of it and that low support 62.21 and with a low 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 down here right around 61 63 with your first sign of support right around 62.78 the 6278 is very important. That needs to hold, but you could bring it down to these other two supports and have a nice reversal bounce on it and maybe about three or four bucks in the scalp and run it up to that 65 area. And then the resistance that you're going to break can carry it up to right around a little choppy chart. I mean, it definitely likes to follow trends. As you can see, you know, if you're in a trend pattern, how it pulls back, how it goes up, how it pulls back. And we could be ready for a double bottom reversal right here. Triple bottom reversal. See how it's reversed back here many a times and bounced up and bring it on up. 
and break that resistance and bring it to 65.64 with a low low support at 61.63 with a strong buy at 62.21 and that's just going to be one you need to keep in on watch and that's it for the market report always remember I always like to, to pull up our website and show you that little bitty bird right there talk about how many we've gained we've jumped up to 1037 followers I can't remember what we talked about last Sunday but it looks to me like another 50 maybe and that's going to be our I love stocks stock uh, Twitter page hit that follow button yeah. ring that bell and Miss Vegas you have anything else you'd like to say uh, no, I just wish everyone a safe trading week and, uh, you know, try to trade green, trade what's in front of you. You know, it doesn't matter. Uh, there will be so much chatter. A lot of stocks out there sometimes are not affected by the coronavirus. So sometimes you maybe stay away from certain stocks and just trade what's actually in the right channel. So just trade what's in front of you um, and have proper trading plans and, uh, you know, stick to your plans and you should do well. Uh, I think it's going to be an exciting week, actually, and, um, you know, either on the way up or on the way down, because you could also short the stock. So there's so many different angles you could trade things on. Um, the fact that some of these large cap stocks are pulling back uh, might be a good shopping opportunity for a lot of people that say, hey, listen, Apple's pulled back a lot. Uh, could we see a bigger pullback? And you never know if we do. Uh, people might be getting it. So one last thing just to mention, please go to our website, ilovestocks.com. Uh, we do have the newsletter that will be released uh, later today. And it's a free watch list. You can sign up. Just go to the website. Very easy. Just put in your name, your email. Click sign me up. You'll get an email confirmation confirming you want to sign up for the newsletter, which is free. And you'll get three free picks separate from the videos so that we can help everyone with their trades and the ones that we put on the watch list that are sent in the email are more for swing trading as well. So that could help people that don't day trade or don't trade full time. We really want to help everybody in the trading community. So thank you for watching. And it's been a pleasure. And uh, Jim and I will do this again with you guys later this week. Have a great trading day. All right. I also put my personal uh, coronavirus watch list on here. So you can stop this video at any time and write these tickers down. And this is the aftermarket report, Sunday's edition with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is 2 20 2020. You got four twos in there. So that's almost too too many. <laughs> but we love <laughs> we love stocks.